Thank you. I'm going to give you a little uh, overview of what we are doing in the French EZ. So just to remind you, we have um, two areas, Crozet and Kerguelen, with seven fishing vessels. We have about 25 trips per year. Each trip is uh, three months long. And we have 100% coverage by observers. Um, for all these uh, fishing events, we obviously collect lat and long and deaf and uh, the number of hooks and all the catches for each species. So at the end of the year of the fishing season, we end up with uh, about a big table with about 2.5 million data in it, uh, which means the data flow is uh, 6,000 new data per day. So this is the, now what we specifically ask to the observers to uh, collect data on and to assess the depredation. So the first question we ask is uh, how many whales are around the boat? And actually, it turns out uh, we did this 15 years ago and it was not a good question because it's difficult to answer. Uh, asking this, we ended up with a um, blank um, field um, by observers because we say, well, I don't know exactly, so I'd rather leave it blank than, than um, uh, say something wrong. So we've changed the question and divide the question into several questions. Uh, first question was, have you been able to observe the whales? Maybe it's not possible because you, you didn't have the time, or it, the conditions were not good enough, or it was at night. And if you've been able to uh, observe the whales, um, were they present or absent? And if they were present, can you tell a minimum number, or can you tell a maximum, or both? And it, it, this is a lot easier to say, well, I think it was between 10 and 15 kilo whales um, than giving an exact number. So what we get is, uh, in the first three columns, we get presence or absence or not observed. And then if it is absence, it's obviously no, uh, not filled up for a min and max. It can be present, but you don't have, have no idea of the number. It can be present, and you can say, well, I think if there is at least 10 individuals, or maximum 15 individuals, but I don't know the minimum. Or you can have a range between 10 and 15, and this is all the possibilities we give to the observers. And it's a lot easier for them to collect data like that. And then you can, ask, you can use the data in presence or in absence. And if you have numbers, you can use the numbers, but at least you know if there were whales or not. Uh, how to know the whales, if the whales interact with the fishery? It's not always obvious like this, like this one was playing uh, to make the fishermen angry. Um, not all the groups interact um, in Kangadan. We do observe killer whales that uh, do not interact at all. They just pass through the boat and they just have a look and they don't come closer. Uh, when the killer whales interact, they follow the boat. Uh, the birds aggregate uh, around the boat to grab some pieces of fish. So it's very uh, distinctive, very easy to see. And they dive around the line. This is very important to know if uh, there is interaction between the boat and the kilowatts. It's not because there are kilowatts are around that you have interactions. Uh, the sperm whales is not as easy. They do follow the boat actively. And they dive around the line, but after that, we don't really know what happens. We don't leave any clue on the, on the line. Uh, we also collect the time arrival. Uh, it's important to know if uh, the whales arrive just right when the first hook is hauled on board. And it's important to have uh, an idea of, um, it gives you an idea if uh, they were following the boat. And also we ha if they ha arrive an hour later, it gives an idea of um, the distance of detection um, they have from the boat. Um, we also ask uh, our observers on board to take pictures for photo identification of uh, killer whales and sperm whales, and they are all uh, provided with uh, gear, uh, SLR camera and a 100-400 millimeter lens. So we ask them to take pictures of sperm whales, as many as pictures as we can, and we try to aim at the caudal fin because they what you see the little. Uh, marks on the, on the flake, uh, that's what we use to identify whales. 
And for rakita whales, they aim um, the caudal, uh, the um, dorsal fin, uh, the shades on the on the saddle, and the eye patch. These are uh, they contain the information to be able to identify from well from one time to the next. And we have two protocols for keto whales, depending on how much time they have and weather conditions. If they have time and if the conditions are, are good, and we ask them to spend 30 minutes and take as many pictures as they can of every single individual on both sides. And this is very useful to have um, relations between individuals and to update all the catalogs. And if they don't have the time, we ask them to spend five minutes at least to take pictures of the main individuals uh, present in the group so that we can identify which are the groups uh, interacting for each line. And we do this for each line if we can, if there is enough um, light and uh, good conditions. So we end up with uh, thousands of pictures each year to uh, analyze. And that's it.